Welcome back to another video. So I am actually training at Iron Warehouse today, which I trained at a few weeks ago. Um, it is week two, so it's pretty light still. Um, I basically want a bit of a social today and me and a couple of friends are gonna go for food after. So I thought I would just quickly jump on and say, I am now at the gym, I'm now gonna train. I'm not gonna chat too much. I'm literally just gonna get in and get it done. Can't get my words out. Um, it is just before two o'clock, so I'm on really good time today. Um, but yeah, now gonna head in and get my session done. It's nice and light, so nothing too crazy to worry about. Okay, so session, I don't really have much to say on. Um, it's week two, it's incredibly light still, everything was really comfortable. The only thing that wasn't amazing, to be honest, is my bench back off. So four by six and 95, which isn't like super light for me anyway, like it's heavy enough I have to kind of focus. I realized after two sets that I was far too like blase about it. Like I just didn't even think about the fact I had to try. I just almost was like, it's week two, it's easy. I don't have to put much effort in. And then I put more effort in for my last two sets and they definitely felt a bit better. But I was slipping quite a lot on the bench. And I think it's because normally on that bench, if I'm a little bit sweaty and just my sports bra, I don't go anywhere. Like it's not a slippery bench per se but my shoulders were definitely moving a little bit each rep. And I think it's just because I was quite cold, that like the gym was really cold today. Um, and I wasn't really sweating after squats either. Like I just kind of got them done, changed, like I didn't really sweat because it was quite cold in there. So I think that just made me slip a bit more. So my positioning overall was a little bit worse, but I mean, I'm still happy with the session. I know there'll be more there next week for bench and I mean, squats and deadlifts, obviously there will be as well. Like everything was fine, everything was comfortable. You can probably hear the rain in the background. The weather is not fine. Um, it's like quarter past 10, so I got home fairly late, but that's because, I mean, I finished training it within like an hour and a half or so. Um, and I didn't start training as soon as I got there, to be fair, I was chatting for a bit. Um, but yeah, went for food with a couple of friends, just went to Weatherspoons, so just eaten there. I did have pretty, I've got like a hundred calories left for the day. Um, so I couldn't hit my macros perfectly today in all honesty, because I needed to make sure I got carbs in before I trained. 
um and then food at weatherspoons is mostly carbs so um and like the protein content and stuff isn't great no matter what you really have so i basically just made sure that my ca calories were like bang on and then protein was as high as i get like i had a shake this morning and stuff when i woke up just to help boost it a little bit um to be fair my fat is actually like bang on today but my carbs are high and my protein is low which i'm absolutely fine with like it's a one-off macro split is incredibly important when you're an athlete because you need to make sure that you're fueling your recovery with the protein but also with fats for your hormones and things as well and then carbs just for general energy so it is important that most days your macro balance is good like calories alone aren't really enough to focus on when you're an athlete um but for the most part like most days my macro is absolutely fine and i've still got 140 grams of protein in which i mean i'm not 100 and i think i'm like 180 something pounds if you work working out like a gram per pound of body weight i'm not exactly 180 pounds of lean mass so 140 grams of protein when i normally have 175 180 is absolutely fine like i would probably be fine having that as my daily amount to be honest with you i just prefer a high protein kind of diet so anyway rambling basically yeah i've been to spoons but i am actually really hungry and i've only got like 100 calories left um so I don't know if I'm going to have a little snack or maybe go slightly over when I get in just so that I want to go to bed really hungry. But also it could be a little bit of travel sickness, which probably sounds very weird. But when I get, I was a passenger on the way to Spoons, so one of our friends like drove us there. So we didn't all like drive separately. Um, and I get travel sick really bad, but I'm never really a passenger. So it's not something I ever really experience anymore. But I couldn't work out if my stomach feels a bit funny because I was a passenger or because I'm hungry. I think it's because I'm hungry because I've just driven myself home and I still feel like it. So might have to go a little bit over, but I mean, it's fine. It's a one-off and I'm in quite a big deficit. So whatever, I'd rather just eat before I go to bed rather than make myself hungry while I like overnight for the sake of it, just to potentially drop an extra hundred grams a little bit quicker or whatever it works out as like, again, I'm rambling. Basically, it's fine and i'm not really too worried i would have a protein shake when i go in just to kind of fill me up a little bit but then i'll be peeing all night and i don't want to do that either i want to just sleep well so yes anyway rambling um i said i was going to do more of a q a in this video but i've barely even picked up my camera today so i'm probably not going to do much of one i'm just going to quickly line up some questions and see if there are any quick ones oh this one's quite an easy one to be fair so um someone asked me what i do for recovery um honestly not much so if i have any niggles or anything appearing like sometimes i get like this kind of inflamed area in my back that a massage kind of helps i very rarely get a sports massage but i don't think i've had one in this entire off season i think i've had one since before my last comp when i was getting some flare-ups in my back so i'm like dropping my camera um in terms of recovery all i do and all i recommend to people are the absolute basics of one your diet make sure you are hitting the right macros for you make sure you're getting your protein in make sure you're getting your carbs in and also make sure you're getting your fats in fats are very important for recovery and i think that's a very underlooked macronutrient when it comes to recovery like a lot of athletes and stuff just think carbs for energy protein for muscle mass like yes they are very important but your hormones and things are all man like very much regulated by your fat intake and stuff as well like it's important to also get enough fat in so basically i make sure that i am on track with my diet 99 percent of the time especially towards the end of blocks my last three weeks of a block will be 100 percent regimented as much as i possibly can unless i have other commitments obviously but for the most part if i know i've got a heavy session coming up i will make sure that two three weeks leading to that heavy session i am on the ball so that my body is as ready as possible so diet hydration i always make sure that i'm drinking plenty like i probably drink three to four liters a day at least and then also sleep like sleep is so important make sure that you're getting as much good quality sleep as you possibly can obviously not excessive amounts but like at least seven to eight hours a night for the majority of people i personally function best on eight to nine but that's not realistic for me during the week so i make sure on the weekend that i have at least one day wherever i can that I don't set an alarm and I just let my body get the rest it needs. And then when I wake up, I just slowly kind of get up. Um, but yeah, so sleep, food, hydration and stress. So I just try and keep my stress low. I don't do anything specific for recovery because quite frankly, I think things like ice baths, like saunas, whatever you want to do, massages, like the more, the more you do, the more you have to do. And I firmly, firmly believe that with sports massages as well. Like, I will get a massage and adjustments done if I feel like I need it or if there's potentially an injury kind of on the way and I feel like I need something extra, but that's very rare. Like I probably get five in a year at most. Um, and yeah, so 
in terms of what I do for recovery, I keep it basic. I make sure my food is good. I make sure my, I'm hydrated. I make sure I sleep well or as well as possible. And I also just try and keep general stress as low as I can. Like I like to just chill out and stuff at night before I go to bed. That makes a big difference. And just things like that. So it's just making time to just switch off and relax as well. So that is what I do for recovery. I'm just going to see if there's any more really quick answers. But I don't think there really is. <laughs> Someone um, asked me, do you really not believe in externals? If so, why? Um, I will just answer this one because it's a funny one. Um, obviously, I'm very aware that external factors will play a role in your training, in your recovery, in any, all of it. Like, of course they will. But only as much as you let them. Like, if you're on your week, like your last week of the block and you've got a really heavy session and you've had, like, when I was refing, uh, um two back two weekends in a row back to back and it was on my two heaviest weeks of the block like i could have easily gone into that final week of the block where i squatted 170 for three and gone oh my god i have been up since half four my diet like i've hardly had time to eat i've just ran in one meal before i left had a couple of shakes i'm just this is gonna go terribly like i know i'm not hydrated enough i know i've not eaten enough i'm so tired oh, I'm not going to, this isn't going to go well. I could have easily gone into session with those beliefs, but then it would have gone terribly. Instead, I was like, look, you've not really had time to eat today. You're not, you're feeling tired. You've not really drunk enough. All you can do now is get some electrolytes in, get some food in, let it digest before you train. I think I had a little nap as well, like a half an hour nap, just to kind of wake myself up a little bit and kind of make myself feel a little bit less like a zombie. And I was like, you've done all you can, suck it up get it done you've put all of the work into this point to get here you might as well commit and just go for it anyway if you tell yourself that your externals are shit and it's going to impact your session then it is going to impact your session if you tell yourself that you have put in the work to load this on the bar and you deserve to hit this weight no matter your externals you're probably gonna hit it so that's why i say externals don't exist they obviously do and you have to I basically look at them after the fact. If I have a really bad session or I miss a, I miss the target or something feels harder than it should, I will sit down after and be like, well, look, X, Y, Z hasn't been great. That's going to be why. But I will never, ever go into a session with the mindset of, oh, fuck, my externals are shit. I better drop the load this week. I'm not going to make that call until I am in the session. I am loading the weights and I will... I don't ever drop the, the weight from the plan. Like, I don't. Unless I'm hurt, I'm not dropping the load. I'm going to do it, even if it's an RPE or two higher than it's planned. Like, it's tough shit. Just suck it up, get it done, and do better next time. So, lots of ramble, lots of ranting. Basically, obviously, externals exist. But they are only going to impact your session as much as you believe that they will. That's all I need to really say on that. Um, anyway... I will do more Q&As in the next video, but I need to get in. I need to decide if I'm going to eat, if there's anything for me to even grab quickly, and I need to go to bed. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please let me know in the comments what you think of the video. If you have any questions, just any feedback is always welcome. Please leave a like and please subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you on Monday for the next video.